Hi, my name is Eric Kim, and in this lesson, we're going to compare and contrast nucleophiles and bases. Why is it important to be able to distinguish between nucleophile and bases? You may have noticed a lot of similarities between SN1 and E1 reactions and SN2 and E2 reactions. Identifying the properties and therefore the mechanism of the attacking molecule would determine the end product in these reactions. Nucleophiles are electron rich and will donate a pair of electrons to partially or fully positively charged electrophiles and form a new covalent bond. My substrate here is chloroethane and the carbon that is attached to the chlorine will be partially positively charged, making this our electrophile. The nucleophile will attack that carbon, triggering a transfer of electrons to form our new product. So the neighboring carbon will have some hydrogen atoms. This second carbon will have the same hydrogen atoms as well as a new bond to our nucleophile. Similarly, bases are electron rich and will donate an electron pair to an electrophile. But in this case, the electrophile will be a hydrogen atom. I can take that exact same substrate, which is chloroethane, and a base will deprotonate this hydrogen atom. And I will again cause a transfer of electrons to create a new product, which is an alkene. Notice that the base will form a new covalent bond to our hydrogen. So in summary, you can see that even though the substrates are exactly the same, the identity of the nucleophile or the base will determine the product that's being formed. So how do we know when a species is going to act as a nucleophile or as a base? Well, depending on the circumstance, a species might actually act as both, which means we will get a mixture in our product. However, other reactions will favor the species as acting as a base or as a nucleophile. So let's look at some tips to keep in mind when we are analyzing these reactions. The counter ion of strong acids will behave as a good nucleophile, not as a good base. Recall that strong acids are ones that fully dissociate in solution. And good examples of strong acids would be hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, and hydroiodic acids. Their counter ions would be chloride ions, bromide ions, and iodide ions. And these would all act as a good nucleophile. Next, sterically hindered nucleophiles need to act as a base, not as a nucleophile. And let's take a look at the reason why. Let's consider this substrate, which is chlorocyclohexane. If I consider this base with multiple alkyl groups projecting off of it, the base is so sterically hindered in order to access that electrophilic carbon that is attached to our leaving group, which is the chlorine atom. So while it might try to do something like this, which would be acting as a nucleophile, it is sterically hindered from being able to do so. Instead, that base is going to extract one of these protons and cause the electrons to shuffle around to create a new product, which is an alkene. So sterically hindered nucleophiles must act as a base and therefore form a new covalent bond to a hydrogen as opposed to a new covalent bond to a carbon. Let's see this in action with our applied question. We're asked to determine whether a species is going to act as a nucleophile, a base, or both. Our first answer choice is a hydroxide anion. We can see that there is electron density on the hydroxide anion. And we know from general chemistry that hydroxides act as great bases. It would be easy to see how the hydroxide anion would be able to extract one of these protons to result in the formation of a alkene. However, let's consider what else we can see with the hydroxide anion. It's really small. And so there's really nothing to prevent that same hydroxide anion to attack the electrophilic carbon that is attached to our leaving group to create a nucleophilic substitution reaction resulting in an alcohol as opposed to an alkene. 
Our second substrate in B is T-butoxide. There's good electron density around that negative charge on the oxygen, and you can see that same oxygen is covalently attached to several alkyl groups, making this a bulky species. If you consider this substrate, the negatively charged oxygen would have a really hard time gaining access to the electrophilic carbon that is attached to that chloride leaving group. Therefore, this bulky species is not going to function as a nucleophile, but instead will be able to gain access to this hydrogen to form an alkene, and the alkoxide will be able to form a covalent bond to the extracted hydrogen. Therefore, T-butoxide will function as a base only. Our last species is iodide ion. Recall from earlier that the counter ion of strong acids will only behave as nucleophiles, and hydroiodic acid will dissociate in solution to form iodide ion. There is electron density in that iodide ion with the negative charge, and if I take this substrate, my iodide ion will be able to attack that carbocation to form a new covalent link to this carbon. Let's also consider what would happen if iodide ion actually extracted a proton instead. Iodide ion attached to hydrogen would reform hydroiodic acid, and hydroiodic acid is one of the strong acids. It will immediately dissociate in solution to form an iodide ion again. And therefore, since the product is not stable, iodide ion will only function as a nucleophile, not as a base.